All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar where we cover what's new in Revit 2023. My name is David Smolker and I'm part of the Revit 2023 launch team and a product marketer here at Autodesk. We have a jam-packed agenda and a team of AEC technical experts ready to take you through it. So without further ado, let's get rolling. A few quick logistical items as you get oriented and as you can see on your screen here. Your default audio is going to be through your computer, but you can change this in your audio settings if you want to join in by phone. We have experts on standby, so please add your questions in the question section of your control panel. You'll see it there with the Q&A icon. We will address them as we go, as well as try to choose a few at the end if we have time. And a note that we will be, excuse me, we will be recording this webinar and you'll receive a copy over email afterwards. And now a moment of safe harbor. In today's presentation, we may make statements regarding future events and development efforts for our products and services. Please take a moment to take in our safe harbor statement. I'll also note that we'll be using the chat uh, to, to provide links and resources as we go. Um, it is disabled for sort of intra, intra webinar chat at the moment. And now we'd like to get a sense of who is here with us today. And we've got a few poll questions that we're gonna put to you, starting with the question, what kind of role do you typically play on a design and engineering project? And please select all that apply. And we'll wait a few seconds here for these results to come in. And I wanna thank everyone once again for joining us. Uh, we're excited about this release and excited to share it with you today. Okay, and it looks like as we see some of the results here, uh, we've got a, a team of producers, folks who are uh, delivering the project uh, deliverables that, that, that get projects moving, get them done. Um, so thank you for that. On to the next question. We want to know your top reason for attending today. Are you considering buying Revit? Considering upgrading to Revit 2023 for yourself? Considering upgrading to Revit 2023 for your company? Are you here for the conversation or maybe you're here to gather competitive intelligence, compare and contrast different offerings? Thank you as you reply here, the results are coming in. All right, it looks like about half of you are here considering Revit 2023 as a career company. Thanks again for sharing that. On to the next question, please. Uh, now we want to know about your experience level with Revit. So have you are you new to Revit, never used it before? Are you just getting started? Are you beyond the basics? Maybe you've got one to five years experience. Or do you and do you teach classes on Revit? So maybe you've been with Revit since the very beginning, some 25 years ago, uh, even before the Autodesk acquisition. And it looks like we've got an experienced group again here. Uh, so, so about 80% of you uh, have, have, have significant experience with Revit. And thank you all for sharing that. Now, let me introduce our presenters for today. We have an international all-star cast from, from the Autodesk AEC technical marketing team. Uh, from Paris, we have Philippe Bonneau. From the Bay Area, out here with me, we have Cesar Escalante. Tomasz Vudala is in Krakow, in Poland. And Brandon White is in excuse me, Wisconsin, out here in the US. Our master of ceremonies today will be Aaron Vorwerk, who hails from Texas. We also have Revit experts on the line to help with Q&A throughout today's session. You can ask questions at any time. And I just one note on questions as we go, uh, we'll do our best to get to them. Um, we, we expect that there will be many. Um, just a general guideline around questions. Um, we can't answer when features are coming, when they'll be available. Um, so you, you could pose those questions, but we won't be able to answer them. Um, any, any questions sort of focused on this release we'll be able to, to dive into. Um, and with that, I wanna pass it over to my colleague and my friend, Aaron Borberg. Take this away, Aaron. Thank you, David. Uh, Revit 2023 is a big release. Um, so thanks for all being here. We're, we're happy to show you uh, just a subset of the around 75 new, new features and enhancements that are really um, heavily driven by user voices. 
you know, representing 4,000 plus votes on Revit ideas. Um, we've centered today's presentation around some of the key themes uh, that those features address. Those themes include design productivity, simulation analysis, interoperability, cloud and data, design optimization, and documentation efficiency. So first up is design productivity. This is a big one. As you can see, uh, Revit 2023 offers across the board enhancements for design productivity. We're not going to cover all of those live uh, for obvious reasons, but the team is going to highlight several of those features here for you over the next few minutes. So let's jump in. With that, I'll turn it over to Philippe to cover our first new feature. Philippe, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Let's look at the major in 3D feature. And I would like to highlight this uh, with a video. So the major in reduce to quickly check distances between model objects or other references in your projects. And in previous releases, the measure tool was enabled for 2D views only. And Revit 2023 had support for both orthographic and perspective 3D views. So that means that you can now snap to any position in 3D without work plane restrictions. Using a new hotkey control, you may lock the measurement such as it remains perpendicular to the start face in 3D views. This might be useful when measuring the distance between walls, for example. And you can also measure the shortest distance to a target plane or line by activating perpendicular snap through the contextual menu. And this announcement to the measure tool in Revit will improve your design productivity by enabling fast, convenient measurements in any 2D or 3D view. Thank you, Philippe. Up next is Cesar with a few features for us. Thanks, Aaron. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start highlighting some of the work plane enhancements released this year. And we have a video for this too. Revit 2023 introduces several new enhancements to work planes that will improve your modeling experience. You can set your active work plane instantly using the PK shortcut or select a pick a plane option under the set work plane dropdown menu. This tool creates a work plane that is coplanar to a selected face. You can now easily switch work planes during modeling operations without opening the work plane dialog. You can also now associate cat links or imports directly to a level or a name horizontal reference plane. In the link or import dialog box, use the place at dropdown to set the base level of the CAD import. Name horizontal reference planes are listed after the levels. If the host plane is letter removed, the CAD file will maintain its position. Rabbit also remember now is the last work plane used in the project. This means that when you load and place a work plane based family, Revit will activate the last used work plane as the default placement option. This selection will be retained until you reset it. The bottom line, you can model faster and more efficiently with these work plane enhancements in Revit 2023. Here is also a couple of material texture enhancements that I think you will enjoy. When we duplicate a material, you are presented now with two new options in the contextual menu. One, you can duplicate a material and an asset. Both the material and the assets are duplicated and the newly created material and source material have independent assets. Changes to the assets of one material will not affect the other material. And the second option is to duplicate user and share assets. The new material and the source material will share common assets changes in the asset of one will affect the other one. Another great improvement is the ability to map your custom texture images to an Autodesk Docs folder path, allowing rendering assets to display consistently on every user workstation. You can use the Autodesk Desktop Connector to exchange and explore these assets 
This solved the issue of missing rendering appearance path when we were rendering outside the local network. You can also access the Revit API to build your custom server connections. I'm really excited about this enhancement. I'm sure a lot of our visualization specialists in the audience will appreciate this improvement, in particular when you're trying to render using uh, Beam 360 or Beam Collaborate Pro. Turning this over to you, Aaron. Thanks, Cesar. Yeah, the, the cloud-based paths, that's, that's awesome. Um, now we'll turn it over to Tomas for some rebar enhancements. Thanks, Aaron. Yes, uh, Revit 2023 improves rebar modeling and detailing with several enhancements. The biggest rebar feature in this version is the fact that you can now model rebars faster and easier with adaptive propagation. Additionally, you can rotate couplers with respect to the bar end for precise modeling with clash avoidance. Also now, you simply set the 3D views detail level to fine and the rebars will be displaced with a, a solid representation. Uh, you can now change the structural usage value to non-bearing to create structural walls that define and divide spaces and support non-vertical load, except their own weight. Moreover, the performance of rebar display in the cloud viewer has been improved. And last but not least, the rebar shape library for UK was updated based on the latest British standard. Now let's see my favorite Re Revit 2023 rebar features, uh, adaptive propagation for rebar in action. Adaptive propagation features for rebar were introduced to increase your productivity in detailed and concrete structures. When you are working on a design that has similar concrete elements and you can, uh, you can quickly and accurately copy shape-driven uh, rebar from one concrete host to another. These concrete host elements uh, need not be identical for the newly created bars to match their new host. And that's the power of adaptive propagation. To use this feature, simply select a concrete element, that's host rebar, and click the propagate rebar commands. Uh, then um, you can choose the alignment methods. methods. You have two options, by host or by face. The rebars are aligned based on the original and destination faces. A destination face can be selected from the same host or from another element in any rapid category that can host rebar. Moreover, you can copy individual bars by making a rebar selection. Simply select one or more rebars in a host and propagate them uh, aligned to a face in the same host or in a similar concrete uh, element. When modeling complex structures such as civil structure or curved buildings, you might use freeform rebars instead of shaping rebars. Freeform rebars may be placed in virtually any concrete host in Revit. And I have some great news for you. The new adaptive propagation features work for freeform rebars too. Freeform rebars can be propagated in a similar fashion to shape-driven rebars. So you can, so freeform bars can be aligned to a destination voice or host. Um, these new features will, will enable you to model rebounds in the Revit faster and easier, increasing your productivity in detail and concrete structures. Let's move on to the steel design. Revit 20, and 23 also adds library-based steel connection design automation features. You can both model your designed intent faster and embed structural engineering and fabrication rules to reduce iterations. Sample rules are provided for placing steel connections based on predefined ranges of applicability. These can be found in the steel connection automation player that you can see on this slide here. What is important about this workflow? Structural members can leverage information stored inside analytical elements. So you may use the member end forces dialog to specify internal forces and moments for steel connections. 
and you ma you can model uh, or your model can also be used um, can also use structure analysis results imported into uh, Revit from robot structure analysis professional or any third party analysis tools. Uh, rules for each type of steel connection are used to place them based on relevant criteria such as profile size, steel grades, and capable internal forces. These rules work in tandem with predefined libraries of uh, steel connections. These are totally new libraries uh, we provide as uh, additional Revit files containing the connection types, desired geometry, um, ge desired geometry parameters, and associated ranges of applicability to ensure connections are selected appropriately. And these uh, steel connection libraries are customizable, uh, enabling you to adjust and extend them to meet your local or regional requirements. Summing up this workflow, uh, the new library-based steel connection uh, design automation feature enable you to design steel structures more quickly and accurately using predefined and easily customized um, rules. Thank you, Tomas. Um, and we'll see a lot more structural content yet, I think, in this release. Uh, now we'll turn to Brandon to highlight uh, some MEP enhancements for design productivity. Brandon? Great. Thanks, Aaron. Yes, Revit 2023 adds flip and elevation controls for fabrication parts. Flip controls make fabrication parts more efficient and now more consistent with design parts. Elevation controls for straight segment fabrication parts now use an interactive in canvas elevation marker. These are editable to control elevations on uh, fabrication parts. Change, uh, changing the elevation will move the entire run, unlike design elements, which apply a slope to the run. The bottom, um, these improvements to flip and elevation controls on fabrication parts will help you detail more efficiently in Revit 2023. Thank you, Brandon. So we've just warmed up everyone with a few features for design productivity. Uh, now let's move into simulation analysis. There are a few features here, as you can see, and we're going to focus specifically on structural and electrical analysis today. So first off, I'll call uh, Tomas back to talk with struct structural analysis. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Revit 2023 introduces a completely new approach to structure and analytical modeling. This new approach offers many benefits to structural engineers. Uh, you can more easily create representations for any type of structure, uh, buildings, bridges, frames, pavilions, stairs, and more. You can create consistent analytical models that align with your preferred engineering approach. You can enable structure analysis jobs from Revit models and you can even create multiple analytical models for a single physical representation and consider various analysis approaches simultaneously. Let's look at a short demo on this workflow to see it in action. This completely new approach to structure analytical modeling uh, gives structural engineers more flexibility and control over their analysis workflows. As before, you can leverage existing uh, physical geometry in 2D and 3D views as a context for your analytical model. The analytical model remains associated to the physical geometry, but is now independent, providing you with the benefits of speed and accuracy in model creation while protecting the analytical model from unexpected changes. Revit 2023 also introduces structure analytical model automation. Um, this uh, tool enables you to generate a structure analytical model automatically from selected physical geometry, and it offers many options for customization. This tool also ensures that uh, the automatically created model remains consistent and connected, eliminating the need for tedious corrections. 
as the analytical model is now completely autonomous, you can choose to initiate uh, structural analysis workflows from Revit without any physical context. For example, when starting, starting a project from, from scratch, uh, you can focus exclusively on analytical modeling, just like you would in a traditional analysis software as a robust structural analysis professional. In Revit, analytical elements are fully parametric and are associated with grids and levels, enabling you to control element positioning using these datums. This new approach improves efficiency, accuracy, and flexibility in developing analytical models in Revit. Back to Aaron. Yeah, thanks, Tomas. And I just want to make a quick note for the audience. Um, we have product managers and technical sales experts uh, on the line for Q&A. So feel free to ask if you have questions about these new features as we're rolling through them, like, like the major features there for structural analysis and what's coming up here for electrical analysis, for example. Uh, we have folks on the line to help, so please use the Q&A uh, panel. Um, so Brandon, I'll call you back here to, to talk to us a little bit about electrical analysis. Sure, Aaron. All engineers and designers working in Revit can now leverage the architect's PDF, DWG, and Revit geometry to perform preliminary load calculations earlier in the design process and prior to modeling any electrical equipment. Revit's new electrical analysis tools enable you to define boundary areas for area loads, for area-based loads and equipment loads. These features help you capture the main loads, equipment, and distribution requirements for your BIM projects in Revit. You can then estimate building loads throughout the distribution systems without placing any physical electrical families in the project enabling a conceptual approach to the to electrical analysis and planning in Revit. You can, um, these uh, new features for electrical analysis will allow you to quickly perform preliminary electrical load calculations earlier in the design process directly in Revit and prior to modeling electrical equipment. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, let's move on to interoperability. Uh, this has been a, a big feature set for and an area of focus, I would say, for the last few releases, and Revit 2023 is no exception. Uh, Cesar will cover a few features for us here, starting with uh, interoperability between Revit and Format Pro. Cesar? Thanks, Aaron. Revit 2023 and Format Pro 2023 introduce expanded functionality for interoperability, making it very easy to iterate on conceptual design. We can watch a video about these features. For the past couple of years, we have streamlined the connection between Formate and Revit, and this year is no exception. You can now link Formate AXM files directly into Revit. Changes to the Formate file are reflected in Revit when the link is reloaded or the project is reopened. While working in Revit, you can now edit a link format file in just two clicks. First, select the format link in your project, then click on the new Edit in Format button on the Modify tab to open the link model in a format session. You can continue iterating your design using the fluid, intuitive modeling capabilities of format. Last year, we introduced the 3D Sketch feature that enables you to launch a format session from Revit, translate Revit elements into format, and import any new format geometry back into Revit using the send to Revit command. This year, the format geometry is brought into Revit as a link file instead of a CAD import, making a smooth round trip workflow. Finally, you can enable a preview mode setting in format and select those layers that will transfer to Revit. A blue frame at the view boundaries will display the geometry to be sent. Once you have verified your selections, you can use the send to Revit command to update the link model file. You have to experience this iterative design workflow between Revit and Formula Pro. I believe it's a game changing in conceptual design and I'm excited about it. Man, I agree just because the design process is never 
is never a linear trip or a one-way trip. It's so iterative. So, so this is, this is pretty cool. Love it. Yes. Next, uh, let's see what's new with IFC integration. For many years, Revit has supported and provided fully certified IFC imports and exports based on building smart data exchange standards. This year, we introduced new features for IFC attributes into Revit. The following built-in IFC attributes have been added as instance and type parameters to all model elements. Export to IFC, export to IFC as, IFC predefined type, and IFC GUID. A new export mapping dialog allows you to select an IFC schema and search for a specific IFC container, an element or a predefined type, and apply those values to elements in your model. You can improve the integrity of your IFC data exchanges with these new IFC enhancements. Another great feature, Revit 2023 it provides new capabilities for managing the display of meshes. You can now override the color of meshes just as you can do with any other element or with solids. The solid foreground color override now uh, solids and it worked for meshes. But here's my favorite, no more internal edges on meshes. All the internal triangulation edges will be displayed hidden with a smooth surface when a mesh is imported into a rabbit. I hope this enhancement will help you better control the display of your projects, your conceptual design, and your custom content in your rabbit project. Back to you. Yeah, thanks, Cesar. Don't go far. Uh, we have cloud and data coming up next. Um, so we have several features here that we've kind of lumped under the category of cloud and data. And today we'll cover a few of those. So I'll bring Cesar back to tell us about the first one, the big one. Happy to do so, Aaron. Uh, the ability to share relevant data with multiple stakeholders across multiple applications is one of the most significant challenges faced by our industry. Autodesk has developed data exchanges to help solve these challenges. Let's watch a video showing us this new approach. A data exchange is a neutral, secure subset of model data that can be shared down many, down many apps, opening the door to streamline automation workflows. Revit 2023 allows you to create data exchanges by first publishing a Revit file along with a set of 3D views to Autodesk Docs. The data contained within each published 3D view can be tailored to the information needs of any specific discipline or trade. From here, you can create an exchange by selecting and publishing a view and sharing it with a stakeholder in a neutral format that then can be plugged into an Autodesk or a third-party application. The data exchange is automatically updated when the source file is republished. And here is a practical application. Using Revit and Inventor, you can use data exchanges to enable a seamless design to manufacturing workflow. A view published from Revit can be shared as a data exchange from Autodesk Docs. Collaborators working in Inventor can load the exchange as an Inventor assembly and use it as a reference for a more detailed fabrication model. When the Revit model is republished, the data exchange associated with the view will be automatically updated and can be pulled into Inventor to ensure the design remains coordinated. This example illustrates the power of automation enabled by data exchanges, and we just started to unveil the potential of this feature, such as enabling automation of construction quantity takeoff, automation of cost estimation, et cetera. Uh, look for data exchanges workflows with Microsoft Power Automate coming uh, very soon. Yeah, this a, that's a big one. Like you said, it's just we're just scratching the surface here, but uh, once we're able to unlock and pull that data out uh, and manage it in the cloud for really any purpose, that's that's uh, significant. 
Uh, thank you, Cesar. So, so we'll go back to Brandon now for uh, some additional cloud and data features. Brandon. Great, thanks, Aaron. First, the Autodesk MEP Fabrication Data Manager Tech Preview is now available for Revit users. The tool enables you to upload your fabrication configurations to the cloud, unlocking new collaboration workflows. The Fabrication Data Manager Tech Preview introduces unique features to address the complex relationships between fabrication parts and pro provide an intuitive view into your data. Built on the Autodesk Forge platform, the Relationship Browser is an enhanced navigation system that allows you to understand and manage the relationships between various types of data. FDM allows you to invite collaborators and add permissions, assigning to a contributor to view permission levels for each of your configurations. This enables you to easily share and manage content across your project stakeholders. Um, you can detail in Revit using FDM managed configurations in the same way as your local configuration data. The Autodesk MEP Fabrication Data Manager Tech Preview on Autodesk Forge introduces a powerful new feature for hosting, managing, and collaborating Revit fabrication data in the cloud. And next, Revit 2023 also introduces a non-destructive model rollback process, which is huge. In previous uh, releases of Revit, rolling back a cloud model was an irreversible process. All backup versions, newer than the version selected, for rollback would be permanently discarded. Revit 2023, in Revit 2023, all backup versions are preserved in the version history and you can roll back or forward to any existing backup. This enables you to back up your Revit cloud models easily and reversibly in Revit 2023. Thanks again, Brandon. Uh, folks, we're making great progress here, uh, moving along through our categories. Next up, our design optimization. Um, there are several enhancements here that they're all very much interrelated. Uh, so we'll take a look at the three of these things together and I'll invite uh, Cesar back to tell us more. Take it away, Cesar. Thanks, uh, Aaron. In Revit 2023, uh, we're providing the ability to experience the both generative design and dynamo player under a common user interface. The define study dialog box supports several new inputs for generative design. You can now enter number inputs. You can also use a slider with a number entry. You can type the design number in an entry box. You can also browse and access directory path or file path as an input in C dialog. There's no need to define them or write them into the Dynamo script. You can now use text inputs and true and false Boolean toggles. Uh, the define study dialog also provides new descriptions for thumbnails to help you choose the proper method for your study. The cross product method has been renamed space evenly to represent better how input data is combined with every parameter in the study. Um, and the Dynamo player user interface has been made consistent with the generative design user interface, making the use of both tools more intuitive and more consistent. Use the Dynamo player to automate tasks in Revit, use generative design to explore multiple solutions to a design problem. You can retrieve and expand the support menu on each dialog and get access to support links in the description of each study. Explore and achieve better design outcomes with these enhancements in generative design and Dynamo Player. Thanks again, Cesar. Okay, we've reached our last key theme, documentation efficiency. And as you might imagine, it's a big one. Uh, we have many new features and enhancements in this category um, applicable to really all users. The team has selected eight of those to highlight in the time that we have remaining. 
Once again, I'll remind you, some of you are asking questions, but please uh, take advantage if you have any questions as these features are discussed. Uh, we haven't heard from Philippe in a little while, so I'll hand it off to him now to cover several features for documentation efficiency. Philippe? Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I'm still with you. I'm still with you. So first, let's talk about featuring by sheet in schedules. So Revit 2023 adds a new capability to schedules that enables them to detect and display only those project elements uh, relevant to the schedule that exist on other views on the same sheet. So you can enable this behavior by selecting the new filter by sheet option, which is available in the filter tab of the schedule properties. And these filters, the contents of the schedule to display only those elements which appear on the same sheet. And the schedule is still live. So if you crop a view to, on the sheet, the contents of the schedule will update immediately and automatically. Uh, and this sheet filtering behavior is dynamic. So you can place the same schedule on multiple sheets and each instance of the schedule will display the elements found on its respective sheet. So this enhancement gives users more flexibility in the use of Revit schedules. So next, you, you can now tag all displaced elements in 3D views. Uh, you can create isometric 3D views in Revit and use a displaced elements tool to, to move to offset elements from their actual positions to improve visibility and documentation. And in Revit 2023, the tag feature has been enabled for these displaced elements. So you may tag the elements before or after the displacement. And if you displace an element that has been tagged previously, the tag will move with the element. So this enhancement will help you document your Revit projects more efficiently and effectively. In previous releases of Revit, uh, replacing a view required you to first delete the existing placed view and then drag and drop a new view into the sheet. Revit 2023 makes it easier to swap views on a sheet. So to swap a view currently placed on a sheet with a compatible view, you can select the existing view and navigate to the positioning and view contextual panel on the ribbon. And the viewport positioning parameter is saved for each viewport and determines how the view is positioned when swapped. So you can select viewport center to use the center of the viewport as a reference, but you can also choose view origin to use the origin of the view itself. The view list is searchable and filters the list of all compatible views and views already placed on a sheet are appended with their detail and sheet numbers for clarity. And if you try to replace a view with another view which is already placed on the same sheet, Revit will alert you with a pop-up dialog displaying the view's current detail and sheet number. So this new feature helps you quickly reorganize your sheets by easily swapping out views, making documentation in Revit even faster. And the last feature I will cover is a new project browser icon for views uh, and sheets, on sheets, sorry, in Revit 2023. And for that, I have a video for this feature. So Revit 2023 introduces a new feature that makes it easy for you to see which views have been placed on sheets. So if you expand the project browser, you will see a square icon to the left of each view name. A solid field icon indicates that the view is currently placed on a sheet. An empty icon means that the view is not currently placed on a sheet. And a half field icon appears when a schedule has been split and some, but not all, uh, segments of that schedule are currently placed on a sheet. 
So you can deactivate this behavior uh, with a right click on the project browser, and you can deselect the option which appears and which name is show view placement on sheet status icons. So this new feature will improve your documentation efficiency by helping you quickly identify views needing placement on sheets. I have to I have to smile here. I'm seeing it may not appear on the screen for everyone, but I'm seeing hundreds and hundreds of emojis uh, for the for that particular feature. So Philippe, nice. I think that one's popular. Uh, we'll bring back uh, Tomas to to talk with us about a a uh, documentation feature here for Rebar. Sure. Um, as you all know, sharp drawings are used by structural detailers to clearly communicate their design intent and fabrication instructions to fabricators and contra contractors. Revit 2023 now offers you the ability to displace Riba elements. This means that you can offset bars slightly from their actual positions in concrete shop drawing views to help collaborators see these elements more clearly and understand your design more easily. When rebars are displaced in a view, their positions are changed in that view only. Um, the displaced bars may still be tacked as usual. Uh, this new feature streamlines coordination between designers and fabricators by improving the clarity of shop drawings in Revit. Thank you, Tomas. Uh, now let's hear from Brandon on a few more of the MEP and platform features. Brandon? Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Revit 2023 improves the handling of demolished MEP elements and their systems. Elements now maintain their system connection and information on, de on the demolished phase. So let's uh, show a quick video on this. In previous releases of Revit, MEP objects did not stay connected when moved to the demolished phase, warnings would appear and the system information you would need to discard. Various workarounds were needed to properly control the visibility of demolished MEP elements. As you can see in the properties palette, the elements did not stay connected to the system. Now with this release of Revit 2023, your MEP elements will stay connected when you move them to the demolished phase. Demolished objects will maintain their system name and abbreviation classific and classification parameters. Your components will stay connected. And the best part, Revit allows you to move adjoining items. These improvements give you better control over your MEP elements when using the demo phases. And uh, in Revit 2023, the electrical equipment circuit numbers show in the properties palette. Now the circuit number parameter is available for panel schedules and electrical equipment tags. So you can easily document your circuit number information for electrical equipment in Revit 2023. And the, the last feature I'll cover today, it's great for all Revit users. The new ability to choose the page order for PDF export and print output. Customize your page orders by the predefined browser organization, ascending sheet numbers, or your own custom order. Manual order allows you to drag and drop sheets into whichever order you choose. Uh, you can save your sets you created for expedited printing. Revit 2023 enables you to choose your order of PDF export or sheet print output. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, that last one's a biggie, I think, uh, for, for all of us that need to get our work out and, and publish it. So uh, before we wrap up, our product marketing manager, David, who started the call, wanted to jump in and tell you a little bit more about the, the many under the hood uh, performance enhancements in Revit 2023. It is a big list. Uh, so, David, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Um, what gets me excited about uh, performance in particular is that um, <clears throat> it really stands to benefit all Revit users uh, on the whole. 
so in 2023, we have a long list of, of performance enhancements, some of them very significant. Um, I'm going to start reading some of them off. There's there's really a, a longer list that I'll share a link to uh, in a second where you can dig in for yourself. But um, you know, view performance is one that we're they're highlighting. Uh, it's been boosted in nearly all loading and navigation tasks, ranging from a 25% boost in MEP to a 400 times faster rotation um, of, of a tag in the properties palette. Shape edited slabs are performing better as much as two to three times faster. Linking of DWG files is seeing a dramatic performance boost. Um, and then the same goes when, when copying large numbers of elements. Um, we're seeing a lot faster performance uh, on that front. Um, three times faster with IFC files. Uh, and now items now load in the, in the type selector instantly, instantaneously, excuse me. Uh, we're also seeing 40% faster for print, publish, and export functions. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so if you if you are looking at the last couple of releases, Revit 2022 and Revit 2023, you're, you're going to see a lot of features focused on sort of everyday design and documentation workflows. And then you're going to see um, a faster platform for doing that, uh, for, for doing those workflows and performing uh, the work that you do in producing deliverables with our last two releases. Um, so I'm I'm making the case for upgrade, but I think I think these are two very strong releases uh, for those of you who are out doing that that everyday design work of of documenting um, and, and producing project deliverables. And with that, I can get back to you, Aaron. Yeah, I'll just I mean I'll just echo that those those are significant numbers. They weren't like oh it's three percent faster than this. I mean, some things are. 750x <laughs> faster in, in small things that you're doing all the time. So I think I think it really will uh, will be make for an outstanding user experience. And anyway, we've covered a lot of ground today. Uh, thanks to all the audience for your participation thus far. Um, and I think it's time to sp spend a little bit more time hearing from the audience. Uh, David, what are you seeing in the Q and A? Yeah. So um, first, I want to note uh, we have a, a one more poll question that we're putting out. Um, asking you about uh, being contacted on a new subscription or to speak to a reseller, uh, please go ahead and, and respond to that question. Um, and then I wanted to flag, we got a question on data exchanges uh, from Dan Van Wilk. Apologies if the pronunciation is not correct. Uh, and then Peter LaRue. Uh, and, and the question, I'll, I'll address both of those points, but the first is, is the exchange function a plugin or do you need a license? Uh, the data exchanges are a new feature in Autodesk Docs that are a benefit to AEC collection subscribers. So if you have the AEC collection, you're able to create a data exchange. Um, so on the topic of Power Automate and the Power Automate connector, um, all, all third, oh, I'm sorry, all third party applications uh, do require a premium license for Power Automate. Um, so, so the Autodesk connector will fall into that group. Uh, you can access it through a free trial, uh, however. So you can try out the, the Power Automate connector in a free trial um, and, and see how those workflows work for you. Um, so I hope that addresses those questions. If there are any other questions around data exchange, feel, feel free to put those into the Q&A. Now, um, what else do we have here? I noticed uh, there were some questions on tagging. Um, curious if we maybe want to get into those, particularly tagging steelwork. Yeah, I, I can answer one. this question, uh, David, Thank if you me. like. Indeed, in Revit 2023, we have some great multi-layer tag enhancements. Uh, you can now select multiple elements. So I saw a question about rebars, so multiple rebars, and generate a single tag for all of them. And you can also control the visibility of individual leaders. Uh, and now you can hide one or several of them. So it really gives lots of flexibility for tagging elements now in Revit 2023. Thank you for that, Philippe. Uh, and, and Philippe, while we have you here, um, you've, you've really given us a nice rundown of, of the features and uh, we appreciate that. Curious if you've got any personal favorites or personal highlights from this release that you might want to share with the group here. Uh, that's a good question. 
you, you, you know, Revit 2023 is uh, really packed with improvements that target uh, everyday design to documentation workflows. So there are many features like the multi layer tag announcement that I could mention here. But maybe one of my favorite announcements is that you can now displace elements not only in 3D views, but also in 2D views on sheets. And to me, this feature is very useful for communicating your design intent uh, more effectively. Thank you, Philippe. Much appreciated. Um, looking at other questions, um, let's see, we have one. Harlan, Harlan Brum, are you there? I, I am. I am here. Uh, I see this one coming in about um, multi-core processors. And I know we we get this question a lot, and there's a perception that Revit is, you know, not not using multi-core processors. So maybe you could address that. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll I'll also add this to the to that question to answer. There's actually a link I want to share. Um, Revit does use multi-core processors, and it has actually for a long time. In this release, in particular for 2023, we improved um, how it leverages multi-threading, multi-core for printing, um, which results in a massive performance enhancement if you have lots of cores on your machine. But it also doesn't slow things down if you're um, if you're uh, you know not on a machine that has a lot of cores. So it, you know, generally we we take that seriously every chance we can. Um, and have been adding functionality over the years in multiple ways. So I'll post the link um, for folks to be able to check out and you know see all the areas that we do take advantage of multi-threading, multi-core processors. Thanks, Harlan. And um, you know, I let me know if this one makes sense for you. Also, uh, there's a question about one graphics system, um, and it's the question is a when question, so we don't want to get into that. Um, but I, I know there was an article last year about uh, sort of the graphics uh, overhaul that, uh, that Autodesk is pursuing. I'm curious if you'd share any notes on that or maybe even just sort of describe what the, the direction is there. Yeah, um, that's sort of an interesting question and a little bit of a misunderstanding in the article, perhaps. Um, you know, we actually already use what's called the one graphic system at Autodesk is shared across multiple products. Revit's actually taking advantage of it for multiple years, um, and we're continuing to evolve and work on that. So uh, there's nothing really to add right now. A lot of this is early stage research about what's happening around um, graphics in general, but it's an area of investment for us as we move forward. And because we're getting um, questions about sort of what's on the roadmap, I just wanna remind everyone that uh, we, we publish a public roadmap um, and I will refresh the link in a second in the chat. Um, and we also have a series of Ask Me Anythings with folks like Harlan and Pavel Piechnik, who's on the line for our structures team, Dan Petisilla. Um, So four, four different Ask Me Anything sessions covering the, the Revit public roadmap, YouTube live streams. Please join us, ask your questions, uh, and you know we can give you a little bit more detail on uh, what's in the product development pipeline. Any, uh, as we keep moving along here, any other questions from the panel that have popped up that maybe you want to, to highlight for answering? And if nothing pops up immediately, uh, maybe I could call Cesar Escalante to the stage. Um, Cesar, there's some, some pretty big um, enhancements around Dynamo Player and generative design in this release. Uh, I know that might fall into your personal favorites, but but maybe maybe take a minute and, and share with us what you're most excited about um, with this release. There are a couple of competing ones that um, it's hard to pick. Uh, I would say the ability to uh, work seamlessly with Formit is one of my favorite ones, in particular when we need a streamline connection between a fluid modeler uh, environment like Formit and, and, and the ability to link and open sessions directly uh, in Formit uh, would allow designers to very quickly create uh, and explore iterations of design directly uh, within the Revit environment. 
but the, the other one that really excite me is the data exchanges um i think with the the it opened the door for automation workflows with a lot of downstream apps and we just started to understand the possibilities of this feature um the rabbit inventor is was a great example of how to do that but uh, in particular you know the forthcoming uh, connection with power automate uh, will open the door to a lot of different uh, data driven design workflows and the business intelligent uh, informed decisions that needs to happen with the use of other tools and i think we we're starting to get into that point of convergence where you know we can think of ac tools working in tank them using cloud connections and i think uh, this is a first step towards that direction and i i like that um, i'm very excited about that oh thank you for that cesar thanks for sharing um the the other thing i want to flag to this group because uh, we uh it, it, it haven't brought it up yet is our autodesk product research community is now approaching about ten thousand members so your peers your competitors out there in industry are are joining our community to talk about or to help us inform product development directions so it's a great time to join we're specifically looking for um structural engineers we want your feedback on new revit functionality you can see uh in in the chat i've put a link included including with our roadmap updates and um, ask me anything sessions so if you're if you're interested in getting involved in revit product development uh and informing the directions here uh, go ahead and sign up to join the community. Uh, we're winding down our time here today. Um, are there any other questions the panelists might want to flag for answering live? And if not, in the just the couple minutes we have left, we haven't heard yet from Tomas in terms of a highlight for uh, Revit 2023, uh, perhaps some of the structural workflows. Is there anything you'd like to to add uh, to what you've presented already, Tomas? Um, if I would be asking you know, about my personal favorite feature of this release, it, it's really hard to pick just one of them. Um, so I'm going to mention at least you know, two of them. The first one would be the new analytical uh, modeling approach. We we introducing with this release, and this is don't forget is just the beginning of the. Uh, uh, revolution and evolution we uh, we are making um, uh, we, we just started and the second one would be on, on my list of favorite features would be would be the adaptive uh, pro propagation for for rebar which uh, improves uh, efficiency and productivity while modeling you know concrete and detailing concrete structures yeah, Tomas, I, I reviewed your video on that topic and was really impressed with uh, the technology and how that was working. I was, uh, I don't want to say that I uh, made a remark out loud, but I, but I believe I did. I was, I was really kind of blown away with that. Yeah. Um, when I, when so I, I, in here, please. Yeah. When I started, you know, playing with this feature and I put my hands down, on, you know, before I recorded this was, yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's a game changer, you know. You can model structures, you know, ten, you know, detailed structures, you know, concrete structures, ten times faster right now. I would say on on my side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a great improvement. So there's a there's a lot in here for for structural engineers and structural professionals. Um, I'm going to share a recently, as of this morning, uh, out here on the West Coast, published blog post uh, that that really gives the breakdown. Um, of what's new in structures as soon as I can find my chat. There we go. Uh, and with that, I think we've reached the end of our session here today. We want to thank everyone for joining. Um, check out what's new in Revit 2023. Check out our blog posts. Come see an Ask Me Anything session. Participate in an Ask Me Anything session with our product managers. Um, and with that, Aaron, any final remarks? You know, I'll just I'll just uh, echo some of the comments that uh, Philippe and others have said. Where there's so much in this release that is, we have while there are a few really significant features, most of it is just making every day better in in Revit, um, and and especially on the production side of things where we spend most of our time. So, 
pretty excited about that, moving in the right direction, I think. And thanks to everybody for attending. I really appreciate the, the questions, the participation. Uh, you make it fun for us. Absolutely. And with that, we wish you a good day and uh, we'll see you down the line. Thank you.